the question here is to sketch some time domain signals. So the first signal, A, we have two unit steps. One unit step that's translated or shifted by one second to the left, another shifted two seconds from the origin to the right. And we're adding the two steps together. So we have a step that starts at t equals minus 1. Because if you were to take this and say t plus 1 equals 0, then t is minus 1. That's where the step starts. And it continues until 2 seconds. At that point, we add a further unit step. So it's the sum of two steps. So it's 1 plus 1 equals 2. So that's your amplitude there. So that's question A. Question B is very similar. We have the same step that's shifted by one second, but it's scaled by a factor of 3. So it has an amplitude of 3. And this time, instead of going up, it goes down because we're subtracting the second step. So again, it starts at t equals minus 1, it goes up to 3, and then at t equals 2, that's when it goes down by 1. So that amplitude would be 2, and that would be 3. And obviously for all time before that, the signal would be 0. Now here, in part C, we have the product of the same two unit steps. So we're multiplying two steps. So I'll draw them in different colors. This is the first step that starts from minus 1. And we have another step that starts at t equals 2. And we're multiplying them together. So you'll notice that for most of the time, one or both of the steps is zero. So when you have zero multiplied by zero, that's zero. Here you have zero multiplied by one, and that's zero. Same here. It's only for this period here, the t greater than two, that we have one multiplied by one. So the product will look something like this. So the product is the waveform in purple. Here we have the sum of two unit ramps. One is shifted to the left, and one is delayed by two seconds. So we're adding two unit ramps. So if we... I'm going to slightly compress the vertical scale. So if we start at t equals minus 1, and if we say that's t equals 2, and that's our first unit ramp. So it's 0 for time less than minus 1. But then if we say t plus 1 equals 0, t equals minus 1. For t greater than minus 1, we have a linear ramp. So that amplitude there would be because this distance here is 3, and it's a unit ramp. So that amplitude there would be 3. But at this point, at t equals 2, we're adding this additional ramp. So imagine an additional ramp. So this is the original ramp, continuing like that. And we're adding an additional ramp. So the slope will effectively double, and we'll have something that shoots up like that. For the next question, we have the sum of two delta Dirac functions, two unit impulses. Again, one shifted to the left, one delayed to the right. So when you add them, you simply sketch each of them. So here we have our first delta Dirac. Again, you'd say t plus 1 equals 0, t equals minus 1. And here you do the same, t minus 2 equals 0 t equals 2. So these are our two key points, and you simply 
draw the delta Dirac function as an impulse. And they both have the same area, so they both have the same height. Even though the amplitude is infinite, we'd represent the area using the height. So in this case, it would be 1. The next question is very similar, but we have different um, scaling factors. The first is 3, and the second is minus 1. So at t equals minus 1, we'd have a much taller impulse with an area of 3. And at t equals 2, we'd have an impulse going downwards with an apparent amplitude of minus 1, but in fact it would have an area of minus 1. So perhaps we could uh, represent it like that. Here we have an exponential. So it's a decaying exponential, and there's a minus sign, so it's a reflected decaying exponential. And because we have the unit step, it's a one-sided reflected decaying exponential. So if we were to plot e to the power minus at, it might look something like that. So that's e to the power minus at. So minus e to the power minus at would look like this. So it would be the reflected version of that. But because we're multiplying it by a unit step, this negative part gets deleted. Because we're multiplying it by something that's only zero, only non-zero for positive time. So that's a one-sided negative decaying exponential or reflected decaying exponential. The next question, we have something similar, but here the independent variable t is squared. So whether t is positive or negative, the power for the e is always going to be positive. So you can imagine that instead of going up, this would go down. But in fact, because it's t squared, what we have is actually um, something that looks like a Gaussian pulse. So it's a rounded top there. And here, for part i, for the two-tailed decaying exponential, whether when t is positive, we have the decaying exponential e to the power minus at. But when t is negative, so if you imagine t is less than zero, then what you have is e to the minus a minus t, because you have the absolute value. So the effect of that is that the power is always going to be negative, because you have that minus sign there. This time we have the product of this double-sided decaying exponential and a rectangular pulse. And I say it's a rectangular pulse because we have the difference of two unit steps. So we have a unit step, subtract another unit step. So a unit step that starts at t equals minus 5, and another negative unit step that starts at t equals 5. So the unit step bit will look something like this. OK, so that's that bit, the rectangular pulse. And that's being multiplied by e the double-sided um, exponential. That's being multiplied by this. So the result is only going to be non-zero between minus 5 and 5. So the result is what I'm drawing in purple. So for t less than 5, it's 0. So we have that result there that I've drawn in purple. 
And for the final question here, we have a one-sided decaying exponential multiplied by a cosine term multiplied by a unit step. So the unit step makes everything easy. That means that everything is zero for t less than zero. Let's bring that down. Now the cosine, let me draw that in orange. The cosine looks something like this. Okay. And that's being multiplied by this decaying exponential. So it's being multiplied by this. Okay, and I, I might as well draw both sides. So now what we're doing is we're multiplying the unit step, which I, I've only drawn half of it, the decaying exponential, and the cosine. So you can see that the amplitude of the cosine will be modulated, or it will be limited, by the value of the exponential. So you can imagine that you'll have something like this. Where you can imagine that the, the envelope of the exponential is both positive and negative. So the final answer is the, the, the sketch in purple.